Marshall Nirenberg hit upon a method to decipher all 64 codons in record time. It turned out if you took cells and you added radioactive amino acids to the cells and you waited a very short time and then homogenized the cell, so you end up with a homogenate, and then fractionated the cell into RNA from the cytosol, RNA free cytosol, and whatever was left of the cell, the rest of the cell, it turned out that the radioactivity, which was radioactive amino acids, was not found where you would have expected it, which is to say they weren't in the RNA free cytosol. Instead, most of the radioactivity was associated with an RNA fraction from the cytosol, the one we know as transfer RNA. Remember, the RNA from the cytosol was an RNA that Nuremberg had extracted previously from cytosol so that he had ended up with RNA from cytosol and RNA free cytosol. We know that now to be tRNA. In the old days, by the way, that RNA was referred to as S. RNA because it was from the soluble compartment of the cell, the cytoplasm. Shortly after referring to this as sRNA in publications, these RNAs were identified as transfer RNAs. So the amino acids that enter a cell rapidly associate with transfer RNAs. Before I go and show you how this enabled Nirenberg to break the genetic code in record time, let's go through the amino acyl transferase or amino acyl tRNA transferase catalytic reaction that associates tRNAs with their amino acids. It happens in two steps. The amino acid plus ATP, it's going to provide energy eventually, plus the appropriate amino acyl tRNA transferase for an amino acyl AMP enzyme complex liberating a pyrophosphate. So the free energy is actually captured now as this amino acyl AMP enzyme complex. Now a tRNA comes in, recognizes this energy-rich AAAMP enzyme complex, and finishes the reaction by binding the amino acid to itself, that is to produce an amino acyl tRNA, liberating the AMP, disconnecting it in other words from the enzyme, and of course regenerating or liberating the initial enzyme itself. So you can sum up those reactions as an amino acid plus a tRNA plus ATP becomes amino acyl tRNA plus AMP plus pyrophosphate. The polypeptide synthesis, which we'll be looking at, is one of the most expensive biochemical reactions a cell can do. And one of the first expenditures of free energy is this ATP that has to be consumed to make every amino acid tRNA that's going to be used in translation. Back to Nirenberg. He realized that ribosomes might be induced to associate with synthetic mRNAs as short as three bases. In other words, he might be able to show ribosomes associating with literally a codon, a three-base polynucleotide, a three-base nucleic acid. And if that were possible, he might be able to show which codon enabled which amino acid tRNA, amino acyl tRNA, to attach to a ribosome. So here's the experiment. He found a filter through which tRNAs or amino acyl tRNAs would simply pass in solution. Also, individual triplet codons would also pass through this filter. And so he had all 64 triplets synthesized and then isolated an extract of E. coli which contained all the amino acyl tRNAs, but he produced all of the triplets and demonstrated that the triplets and the amino acyl tRNAs would indeed pass through the filter. He also demonstrated that if he isolated E. coli ribosomes, that they would not pass through the filter. They would be retained in the filter and they would stick on the filter. So the experiment then was to mix UUU and extracted ribosomes with the 20 different amino acyl tRNAs. And this could actually be done in a single experiment in a single tube, unlike the original synthetic message experiment. You could mix these all together. Think about why that was possible. Mix them in a tube and then pour that stuff after a moment or two through the filter. The expectation or the hope was, as shown here, that the ribosome would in fact bind to UUU, and if it did, that the phenylalanil tRNA shown here would be induced to bind to the ribosome via the UUU, via its codon. And if it did, then phenylalanine tRNA bound to the ribosome could not pass through the filter, and the filters could be analyzed to see if there was in fact such a complex. And indeed, that was what was found. So UUU on the ribosome would attract from such a mixture only phenylalanil tRNA, the remaining codons, were quickly deciphered in the same way. Okay, so that's how the genetic code was ultimately deciphered in short order. And here is the 
genetic code all broken for you. 